Now, scripts is something I'm kind of known for. It's something I've done a lot of, and I have a handful of those that people absolutely love. The biggest one, of course, I think is the scheduled reviews script, which is one I use all the time. And it's one that I have <laughs> the most questions about. Uh, the second of those would be the auto parser. Uh, links to all of the scripts I've ever written, plus some of my template projects and such, are in a GitHub repository. I'll put a link to that in the course material. But the one I use the most is the scheduled review script. Now you can see here in the toolbar that I have four scripts lined up um, with images. And three of those are ones I use regularly. One I keep around just in case. Um, the first of which is the scheduled reviews one. And let me just click on that so you can see what it does, because it instantly brings a pop-up. This particular review will take the projects that you have in your system. If you have it marked for review weekly, it will set it to whatever day of the week you have chosen. If you tell it to go monthly, it'll pick the day of the month that you want to do. And annual will do the same thing. You can pick the month and the day of when you want to do your annual review. You can choose yes or no to change them, and it'll go off and do its thing. So in my case, um, I just finished my review, so I'm not going to say yes. Um, but what it would do is make the adjustments and reset the next review date to whatever those decisions are that you have there. Now, there's two times when I run this. One is anytime over here on the left, I see the review perspective has the little indicator icon, kind of like what you see on the forecast right here. Whenever that in indicator comes up, I click on that scheduled reviews script and run it. Because what that does is if today is the day of a review, it will then adjust those dates to today and that flag will stay there. If it's not the day of a review, that flag will go away because it has adjusted those. And that usually happens because you've added new projects and it will automatically set the next review date as a week from the day you created the project, which may be a Tuesday, and you do your review on a Monday. Well, and it would sit there all week. That drives me absolutely crazy. So it will readjust things um, for that particular day. Now, the beauty of using this uh, is that whenever you do have that review day and you go ahead and run it on the day of your review, that's awesome because then when you go to the review perspective, guess what it does? It lines things up in the exact same order as your projects because all of them are being reset it will then put them in the order of the review that you have on the left. So again, going back to the order of your projects being important, super valuable because it means that every time I'm starting with my higher horizons, I'm starting with the mission I'm working towards before I go through my areas of focus and my general checklists and such, like it does things in the right order. Super, super valuable. If you're one that likes to schedule your reviews and not do them every single day, highly recommend you look into this one. Uh, another one here that I, I find helpful is the second one, and this particular one is the total time. Now, if I take a look at this available perspective, if I highlight everything here, okay, and click on that, it's going to run quickly, and it's going to tell me I've got 20 minutes total for those 11 items. Now, granted, I have, in this particular case, nine items that don't have a, a total a estimated time on them. That's fine. But this is a nice one that tells me if uh, I have enough time to actually get everything done on my list. Uh, this is something I run usually every morning whenever I come to the office and I'm looking at this available perspective for the first time. Grab everything on that list, run the total time, tell me do I have time to accomplish all of this. So this just tells me do I have enough time to accomplish everything I have on my list for the day. And sometimes the answer to that question is no. Uh, another one on this toolbar up here I call duration titles. This is one I wrote uh, because I got frustrated with the iOS versions of things. Now you'll notice here, you've probably seen this through a lot of these videos, there's a couple of these here that have the duration at the end of the task title. I'm not putting that in manually, that's something that I use this script to put in. Um, anytime I make an edit to a duration time, an estimated duration, I will run that script and it will then take whatever time I have put on that particular item and it will append it to the title of that particular task. So just as an example, if I take this one, edit all videos for working with OmniFocus 3, 
Um, I put these in here just so I had something to work with. I don't actually run them, my tasks like that. Um, if we put in that particular one and say it's going to take me 75 minutes, okay? So an hour 15. If I then run that particular script, it will take that particular, uh, it will run through the entire library of tasks in OmniFocus and make edits to those. If the time already exists on the task uh, and you have changed it, it will make an edit to it. If you've removed the time, it will remove it from the task title. Whenever you've added it, it will put it onto it as well. So as you see there, it has now added 75 minutes to that particular task of edit all videos. Uh, so it takes longer than that. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> it's quite a long process. So that's super nice when you get to iOS. Because on iOS, OmniFocus doesn't allow you to see that de estimated duration very easily. So that is one that I use to sidestep it because it's easy for me to use the Apple script to add it to the task. And then it makes it easy for me to see those on iOS as well. Just so I can see, you know, if I've got 30 minutes before my next uh, phone call of sorts, I know I may have time to, to knock a few of those out. Just makes it easier to make those decisions. The last one in the list up here is the classic populate template placeholders script. Um, not one I wrote, um, but I'll put a link to it in the course materials. I don't use this one right now. Um, I keep it around because it's one that I always feel like I should use, but I've gotten to where I use templated checklists of sorts. So if you go back to the project list and under checklists, you'll see I've got a handful of these checklists that I run through. I do have a templates folder as well that theoretically I would use for that, but obviously it's empty right now. So anytime I've got projects that I would use that for, it seems like I'm just using recurring projects for them instead. So I could maybe see how that would be useful in the future, but right now it's not one I use regularly, but it's one that a lot of people get a lot of mileage out of. So I wanted to mention it. So those are the scripts I use. I've got a, a number of more of them that I have written that I don't actively use right now, things like shuffling tasks or triggering projects based on the weather data. Um, there's, there's a number of these. And again, this is in my GitHub repository called OF Scripts. Uh, I'll put a link to that underneath this video as well. And uh, you can go check those out. But again, links to all of the scripts that I am using are there as well. Uh, and you can go check those out, download them, and, and run from there.